Good morning. Good morning. Praise God to all of you all out there. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. I know some of y'all are looking at me to say Happy Easter, wasn't you? At this, brother. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let's go before our Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for grace. Thank you for showing us your unmerited favor. Thank you for imparting you into us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There is no other God but you. Thank you for giving us the ability to live holy. Thank you for sealing us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for showing us how to get things done by faith. Thank you for giving us your lifestyle by faith that we do not have to be subjected to the things of this world. We thank you, we thank you for thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father God, we know that you have already provided all things to us that pertain to life and godliness. And you have given them to us by your spirit. We love you and we appreciate you. Now as we take this new adventure to your word, Father God, we know that you are going to unlock the hidden truths to us via the Holy Spirit so that we can grab hold to those things and we can impart them into our lives and be committed doers of those things. We love you and we appreciate you. And I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, and thanks be to God. Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians. We have been teaching on all this year, teaching on all this year, excuse <coughs> me, about falling in love with Jesus. And the only way you can and just just a re, just a reprieve for right here. The only way you're gonna be able to fall in love with somebody. That's if you begin to get to know somebody. That's the only way you're ever going to be able to fall in love with somebody. Um, you, know, you know, they say, uh, love at first sight. <laughs> that, that, I, I, I kind of believe it to a degree. I kind of believe it to a degree. It's never happened to me. It's never happened to me. And I'm a happily married man. Um, I didn't fall in love with my wife at first sight. Matter of fact, when I first met my wife, I thought she was this skinny old toothpick. <laughs> and that's this woman. And she couldn't stand me. She thought I was an obnoxious, egotistical dude that, that was just working at this job. <laughs> anyway, anyway, just, you know, just look, look back, look back. But you don't really just fall in love with people for the, for the most part. At least I know, I know. But some people you do, you've met this person and love at first sight. Praise God. I know with Jesus, I, some people fall in love with Jesus at first as soon as they meet him. Me, I didn't. I literally had to be scared the hell out of him to, to, to receive Jesus. You going to hell, I always knew about hell. I really didn't know. I just didn't know too much about it, but I just knew it was dark, fiery, and you fall all the time. And yeah, you're always on fire. And you in pain. Me, I hate pain. I hate pain. In my physical body, I hate pain. I hate it being. If it's in my body, I hate it there. I hate pain. And I know I've heard it. I had heard that hell was a place of pain and torture. And I'm like, no, I was scared of that. And I, I knew if I could receive Jesus, <laughs> once they told me, they said, you receive Jesus, you won't go to hell. Praise be to God. Bring Jesus on me. So, <laughs> That literally, I was scared, still, <laughs> let's just say it like that, to receive, to receive Jesus. But over time, the more and more I learned 
about Jesus, the more I began to love him. And the more I began to see that he really does love me. Not that I loved him first, but he loved me first. Before I ever even came into existence, Jesus lived, died, and then rose from the dead for me before I ever came into existence. Before my mom and daddy came into existence. Praise be to God. So, with that being said, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, I was trying to, God, the Holy Spirit had to show me how to connect this thing today, because that's all we're going to talk about today is the resurrection. We've been hitting, we've made points at it. <clears throat> we made points at it over the last couple weeks leading up to today. Uh, let's look what it says in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 2. Look what it says in verse 1. <clears throat> and I, brother, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And I, brother, when I came to you, not with what excellency of speech or wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and what? Mm -hmm. And him crucified. This is Paul wrote for the book of, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. And this, he was writing to the Corinthian church and uh, I've learned no matter where you go, especially when you first start teaching a new revelation, like uh, when the revelation of grace first came on the scene. Now, some Christian folk got all out of whack, and they were saying that preachers was teaching, uh, they was teaching that God loves you no matter what you do. You can go sin as much as you want, and they was basically almost saying giving people permission to go sin. Uh, for a long time, a lot of preachers, they were, in, in, in some areas, not a lot of churches, but I know like in some areas, they were preaching uh, condemnation. If you sin, God ain't going to be able to forgive you. God, you're going to go to hell if you keep sinning. And that's not what the grace meant. The more and more you receive grace, the less you're going to want to sin. And I, I, I figured that one out. It's like it, even, in, even now, when things happen to me, if temptation comes and I can sense the temptation to go do something asinine or something crazy or say something crazy or do something crazy or whatever crazy, <laughs> you know, it's just sin. It's almost like in you. And it's like, don't do that out of me. That's the Holy Spirit functioning. And it's not making you feel bad. It's just like, Ivory, you know that's not you. That, that old Ivory dead and gone. Woo! That, that's grace, and that's grace in operation pulling you toward holiness instead of you resisting holiness and going toward the sin. I'm going to say it again because some of y'all didn't get that. When, when you really, really receive this grace, a lot of people will begin to preach. A lot of people begin to think that it's freeing me so much that I can just go commit the sin, and that's not the case. When you receive grace, it's going to pull you toward holiness instead of you resisting holiness and going toward the sin. Y'all y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? Okay. And Paul was preaching the same thing, and people got all out of whack, and they was making they were making it seem as if that Paul was trying under the old covenant, you know. Well, because Paul did teach, was around teaching a lot of Jews as well as most predominantly Gentiles, though. Predominantly Gentiles. And they were saying, well, you know, you got to follow the covenant. You got to follow the old covenant. You got to follow the old covenant. Because remember, the new covenant had not been established yet. Paul, God was, God used Paul to establish the new covenant. Remember when Paul first, uh, when, when he was Saul? And he went through the, went on the road to Damascus, and Jesus showed up and said, "Why do you why do you fight against me so much?" And then Paul was talking to Ananias about healing his uh, healing his eyes, and he said, "This man is going. I'm gonna use him to bring forth 
he the, the things he got to suffer from me, which means he got he's gonna be bringing forth all these new ideas that the world had not seen yet, and he, I got to use him to bring them to pass. And Paul was introducing this new revelation. Look how he said it. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with what excellent speech. He wasn't coming up with no big homiletical, theological, philosophical words <laughs> of wit or work of wisdom, or declaring unto you the testimony of God, which meaning old covenant, old, old teachings. But I determined not to know anything among you what? Save or accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. In other words, I've been with you the whole time. You've seen how you've been going through challenges in life, but I've, I've been going through them as well, and I've been right here with you. My only difference is <clears throat> I have peace, and you don't. Notice what he said. Except Jesus Christ, him crucified. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The resurrection happened after he was crucified. Every last year we taught on everything is hindered or hinged on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ did not raise from the dead, if he did not raise from the dead, no matter what, there's other scriptures and we, we might read them today, we may not. It says that the, the only way that you'll be able to determine if you're living or not, that's if Jesus Christ is rose from the dead. Because without the resurrection, there is no resurrection of the dead then you're still yet dead in your sins. I think we touched on that just uh, last week on Wednesday night, or last week on Sunday. The, that's the only way. Jesus Christ, if he did not raise from the dead, you are still stuck in your sins. Still stuck. You, you still need a Savior. Watch, watch what it says here. Watch this. It says, verse 4, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of wisdom, man's wisdom. Hold on. It almost sounds like he's saying the same thing again. Same, same thing again like he just said up here in verse uh, verse 1. But look how he says it. <clears throat> in my speech, in my speech, in my preaching was not with what? Enticing words of man's wisdom. Now that's the key power I want you to get there. I want you to get that key word there. The word enticing here. Oh, Lord Jesus. These words sometimes get smaller and smaller. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Those, those words, are, the word enticing here means to be persuaded. I'm not coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Forgive me. was not planning on that. <clears throat> Who saved you a lot? Get out of my body. Notice what he said. Here's a key point. I know I'm all trying to mess somebody. He said, I'm not trying to talk to you with the different philosophies of the world. Hold your finger there. I want you to go over to the book Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians Ivory. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 8. <clears throat> verse 7. It says, Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware. Least any man spoil you what? Through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I want y'all to catch that. Not after who? Christ. Christ. People are going to come up and they're going to try to figure out a way 
to get you to believe their points of views or worldviews instead of believing what God has said. I even had some Jehovah's Witnesses came knocking on my door. Oh, Lord Jesus, they came knocking on my door. And I, I invited them in. Told them, yeah, I opened the door. They started, I knew what they were doing. And I wasn't trying to show how smart I was or how built I was up in Christ. But they, they were showing, they tried to give me some literature. I said, well, why don't you, let me give you an invitation to our church. Let me give you, well, well you show up at our church and I show up at yours. And I said, well, why don't you show up at mine? You came knocking on my door. He said, you're right, I came knocking on your door first. And I, I was like, okay, well, well uh, how about you How about you receive my invitation? Well, how about you just take this? It's almost like they didn't want to receive my invitation, but they were trying to give me some literature to read. I said, well, then let me show it to you in your Bible. No, 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 it's my Bible. Uh, no, it's my Bible. And he, he went straight to that scripture right there, trying to get me to believe. And the scripture even says, in Colossians, you just read it, anything that's, that does not follow Christ, but yet at the same time, he didn't believe that Jesus was the Christ. And I was like, I can help you out with this if it points you right in the right direction. But no, 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 that's okay. Well, I got to get going now. And I was like, wow, okay. Almost people would teach these things and it's almost like they're trying to preach condemnation on people and trying to preach, how can you use this, these scriptures <laughs> and pull people away from Christ? I don't get it. Go back on to 1 Corinthians. Notice what he said. You know, notice what Paul said in verse 4, four here. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of what? Spirit. The spirit and power. The spirit and power. What is he referring to the spirit? He's talking about referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings us all together. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the, uh, uh, what, what did Jesus say in the book of John? The Holy Spirit will come and he will show you all things. Some of us have not been allowing the Holy Spirit to show us that Jesus is the Christ. I'm going to say it again. Some of us have not been allowing, uh, we have not been allowing uh, the Holy Spirit to show us that Jesus is the Christ. And that's how people will come right on in and they'll be able to trick you. See, stop it, stop it, stop it. Some of y'all's minds are going religious on me right now. You've been, so you've been, so, when you leave out of here today, I want, or God wants, forget me, forget me. God wants you to be well informed so that you can have something to use against Satan because he is the ultimate one who's coming up with the different philosophies. He's just using people. What does it say over in the book of Ephesians? It says our battle is not, or our, our, our war is not against flesh and blood but against powers, against principalities of dark, of dark and rulers of this world. Satan, he uses people, and people don't even know he's using them. But if you don't know what God's word says, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up in a situation to where you will be some, find yourself submitting to the rudiments or the men's philosophies. I ain't preaching nothing to you but Jesus Christ. Jesus. And him crucified. Notice what Paul says next. He says, and with power. And the demonstration. How do you demonstrate the power? How do you demonstrate the power of people of God in your life? How do you demonstrate the power? There you go. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. And then when you, once you confess, because you believe what it says, then you confess what it says, you'll see it come to pass. Ah, see, no, 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 no don't, don't go nowhere else. That's the power of the resurrection. Without the resurrection, faith doesn't work. Faith did work under the old covenant, but it was established based on the old covenant principles.
some faith, some faith, uh, some some faith move, some parts of the faith. But faith actually started before the old covenant. Let me just say it like that. Before, because I, I said it, I gotta explain it. God started using faith before the old covenant even came into existence. But faith was supposed to continue on in the old covenant. But the old covenant. Because people got a hold of philosophies and rules and regulations, they just began to do things by works and not by faith. Y'all feel me? You catching it? And now, what we, for those of you all who've been around here a long time now, you you know these things. But some of y'all out there, you've never, you, you don't even know what I'm talking about. That's like I'm speaking Greek to you right now. <laughs> but uh, faith will start at first. We was, they were supposed to use faith under the old covenant, calling those things that be not as though they were. Believe in God, just like Abraham did. He believed God. God imputed unto him for righteousness, and Abraham just kept confessing it. Oh, I confess, believe, confess, believe, confess. And then he saw what he had believed in his heart. And that's what was supposed to work under the old covenant. So faith did, was supposed to work. But faith did not work anymore under the old covenant because preachers and other teachers of that day, all oh, they began to just teach on the works. And then before you know it, they got into the sacrificial system and, and it just it became a big old mess. Jesus had to come and show them how to really, really get it done. That's the only reason why Jesus was able to live on the earth under the old covenant because he lived it by faith. He lived it by faith, and he was able to achieve what no other man could do, and that was perfection of the old covenant. So Jesus had to close it out. All right, see, I'm going to go on down that road, but let's get on back over here. Look what it says. He says, verse, verse uh, 5, that your faith, oh, what were we just talking about that? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in what? The power of God. The power of God. The demonstration or people see it come to pass. People see it come to pass. People see it come to pass. Think about it. You've been, if you are believing God for certain things, a lot of us don't mix our faith with it because we never confess it. We never confess it. Now, Jesus Christ showed us how to get things done. God started it with Abraham and so forth and so forth and the whole, all the patriarchs under the old covenant because some of them were living by faith and some of them were not. A lot of them were not. That's why we didn't. That's why Jesus had, couldn't show up. Think about it. If Jeremiah would, would have uh, completely fulfilling done what he was supposed to do, what if, what if uh, uh, Isaiah done what he was so completely supposed to do? Or Hosea, all of the other old patriarchs. God used them to establish over 4,000 year span, used them to, to establish over 4,000 year span, how man could not get things done. I'm not knocking anybody in the old covenant. I'm not. And I want y'all to really, really hear me. Because you even see this. Uh, when Jesus came on the scene, you saw how Peter couldn't get certain things done. Did Peter rebuke Jesus? <laughs> Peter what? He rebuked Jesus. Did he or did he not rebuke Jesus? Yes, he did. Okay. Did Peter deny Jesus? Yes, Peter did deny Jesus. I want y'all to really, really think about this. You really think about this. If men could get things done, if men could get things done without Jesus, what we need Jesus for? Praise God. Praise God. Think about it. Without Jesus, we all still messed up. <laughs> we all still in the ball of nothing. We still waiting on the Messiah. We're still waiting on somebody else to, to get things done. 
Jesus the one had to come and get it done. Look what he says. Look what he says. He says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Think about if your faith was still standing on different philosophies and rules and regulations. You will still be all messed up. But God says what? But in the power of God to establish it. Watch this. Hold your finger there, and then we're going to close it up here on this. Turn your Bible to the book of, uh, what is it? Holy Spirit. You, what is that? Holy Spirit? The power of God. Turn your Bible to the book of Luke. Luke. Still been trying to use his new Bible. <laughs> Everybody at the book of Luke, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Look what happens when Jesus, when Jesus starts demonstrating things in the power of God. Verse 18. Jesus had just showed, he had showed up in the church. And he, and he went in there like it was his custom was to read the Bible. Some of y'all need to have a custom of reading the Bible. You go read that up in verse 16 when Jesus was in the church and his custom was to go into the church and read the Bible. <laughs> he was supposed to read the Bible. He's been trying to get people to read the Bible on a hot But look what it says in verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to what? Preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to, he has sent me to preach the gospel, I mean, preach deliverance, I mean, preach uh, to the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, which is the gospel, uh, and the recovering of sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are what? Bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Watch what Jesus does. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And all the eyes of all and all the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Look what Jesus does. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture. He specifically pointed out a specific scripture in the book of Isaiah about how Isaiah was preaching, talking about Jesus. I'm going to say it again, because it was in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah wrote down that there has to come somebody else besides me that's going to bring to pass what you've been believing for. And it was pointing toward Jesus. And look what Jesus said in them. This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. What was Jesus ultimately saying? I'm the guy Isaiah was talking about. I want y'all to really catch that. Oh, Lord, that's just, it's just it's cool to me right now. <laughs> here I am. I'm here on the scene. I'm the guy who's going to bring things to pass. Hold your finger there right there again. Go to the book of Mark. Mark 11, just one, one, one book over. Mark 11. Mark 11. Oh, Lord Jesus. 24. Verse 23 first. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and, and be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe the things that he saith, it shall, he said, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Hold on. Who just said that? Jesus said that. This is the power of God right here. You believe it, and then you say it. You believe it, then you say it. Paul was doing that in the book of Corinthians. He was believing it, and he was saying it, and people were watching it come to pass.
glory to God. Look what Jesus does next. Verse 24. Therefore I say, Jesus is now backing the words that you say. But he's only going to back the words if it's lined up with his word. What does it say to that, Pastor? Read on. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye shall receive them, and ye shall what? Have them. You still ain't telling me how I know it got to be back to God's words. We just got to read over in Corinthians. What did he say? What did he say in Corinthians? He said, I'm not coming to you with man's enticing words. I'm coming to you with power of God. The power of this. Oh, God's power. God gave me his power to bring things to pass? Yes. And it's all based on Jesus backing it. And we just went down a 35 minute lane, 35 minute walk. These new ideas that God wants to see you do well. But you got to believe it and you got to confess it. And Jesus says, I'll back it. That's what he said with Mark. He said, therefore I say. Therefore what? He says. So all I got to do is say, okay, I believe what Bible, but God, I believe what your word says about me. If you have you, if you have challenges in your finances, you have challenges in your relationships, you have challenges in your in, in your with your children, with your or with your job, you have challenges in the career or, or whatever. You have, okay, let's, let, let's, let's, let's take back things simple. You addicted to cigarettes. You addicted to pornography. You addicted to, to homosexuality. You addicted to lesbianism. You addicted to anything that ain't of God, and you know it ain't of God. God says it's based on what you believe, and then you confess it. Father God, I don't want to be caught up in this jacked up relationship anymore. In the name of Jesus, I believe in you, and you have a man or a woman. If you're a man and you believe for a woman, and if you're a woman, you believe for a man. Father God, I believe that you have a man for me, and he's going to be a godly man, and he's going to obey you, and he's going to love you more than he loves me. You confess that, God says, it'll happen. You struggling with cigarettes? Father God, I don't want to smoke these things anymore. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing my mouth that I will not be addicted to these things anymore. And you keep believing it, and you keep believing it, and you keep confessing it, and you'll watch it come to pass. That's how I quit smoking. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's how I quit. I did couldn't stand these things. Stay. Can't stand these things anymore. Every time I said it, it's like the taste of them get worse and worse. And finally, one day I just said, I ain't smoking this stuff anymore. Praise God. Praise God. Same way with money. Father God, I believe that you are the supply of all of my needs. I believe that with all my heart. And the money coming forth in the name of Jesus. Nope, all is well in the kingdom. <clears throat> all is well. God, Father God, I believe that you are, you, you are my satisfier. You said, if I commit myself to you and, and give my substance to you, and you said, Father God, so shall my bars be filled with plenty. I believe you. I believe you. Thank you, Father God. Grace is already provided for it. I just believe you. I confess that in my life right now. All is well in the kingdom. Thank you, Father God. I am doing well. Father God, I believe by Jesus Christ I'm healed. I'm having a sickness in my body. Father God, by Jesus Christ I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, my arteries are not clogged up. Now you can't go around here eating a fat back pork sandwich either. <laughs> Confessing, Father God, I just believe that you're going to take all of the fat back pork out of the fat back pork so I can eat the fat back pork and it ain't going to clog my arteries. Don't you got to go eat a salad or something. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, you got to do something. So you just... But it, it don't work that way. So God will give you wisdom on what to eat and what not to eat. Oh, well, praise God. Praise God, man. Last verse. Last, look, look, look what it said in 11. Look what it said in chapter 11, verse 24. Lord, praise God. Verse 24, he said, Lord, what in the world are you doing, Pastor? Luke, Mark 11. My, my page, huh? Did y'all see the camera page? Wasting my time. I don't get too many minutes. 
get the get the last point in, get the last point in. So 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 it is so you can be rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded. Mark 11, 24, Look what it says. Therefore I say unto you, when ye went to, when, unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. You shall what? Have them. You shall have them. The whole point is, you'll see it come to pass. And Paul was teaching this new philosophy, hey, I'm standing here preaching to you nothing else save Jesus Christ and him crucified. The two main things you'll need in his life, holiness and faith. Holiness, faith, and love. Holiness, faith, and love. Those three things. Holiness, faith, and love. The love of God. You need to be able to walk in love with people. You gotta be able to walk along with people because as you begin to see these things come to pass, people, persecution gonna come. It's gonna come and people gonna talk about you. People gonna say things about you. And then when they say it, they're gonna say, well, God loves you more. No, you're just working the word. And those people are not working the word. But you gotta be able to get in God's word to be able to work it for it to come to pass. Praise God. Hey, we'll be right back.